Coming up on today's show, the big equipment gets rolled out as we find out what a harvesting operation is all about. Carbon and forestry and how they complement each other and a bold new tourism venture at Maydina. Starting with harvesting today, folks, and we have come here to the Styx Valley, Nick, where it all happens. We're going to meet the loggers and see exactly how they harvest the site. Exactly right, Andrew. This is the sticks, as you mentioned, a contentious area. Yeah. And harvesting, I guess, is one of the contentious issues. Absolutely. It's the pointy end of forestry yes. in Tasmania. So today we're looking at how they actually do it and how it's sort of evolved over the years. A lot has changed over the years in forestry practices and harvesting is no exception. It wasn't that long ago that harvesting a coop meant men on the ground, chainsaw in hand, waiting for an inevitable injury or even worse. Nowadays it's all machinery operated but it's also a family business and most of the state's forestry contractors have grown up in the bush. I left school with 15, so 28 now. Just always come up on Saturdays with me old man and just forever really. My name's Kevin Musket, I'm uh, one of the directors of our company from BR and KF Musket and Sons. We're a uh, Doomer Valley company. Uh, we're on my brother's operation uh, in the Plenty Valley. This is about 70 year old uh, regrowth uh, operation. Uh, over my time, uh, probably the last 20 years, we've seen quite a few changes over the years. Whereas we're sort of running on probably about 80 to 90 per cent uh, mechanically harvesting here now. Uh, going back probably 10 years ago at least, we were running five to six bushmen. Um, and of course the, the dangers were quite high in some of this uh, native regrowth. Whereas now we've got a uh, fella buncher, uh, as you can probably see on the landing there, a, a mechanical harvester. And it's all done by, uh, all done by machine. Machines such as processors, skidders and loaders worth millions of dollars are common sights on a 2009 logging coop, while the methods of chopping down a tree have also changed. So Jeff, in terms of getting people out of the bush and out of harm's way, this particular machine has kind of revolutionised the way that, that uh, you operate. That's exactly right. Um, safety is the main issue here. Right? This machine now, instead of having a, a, a man walking around the bush with a chainsaw, we've got a nice safe environment in the, in the machine cab and productivity is the other, the other thing. So how does this thing work? Well, it's all hydraulically driven, okay? This, um, these grapples here open up, yep. you can actually lift a tree, I suppose a tree with about three and a half tonne in it, yep. but you can also directional tree, a directional fall a tree, yep. that's probably about one and a half metres through it. There's a simple, basic ways as a, as a bushman used to, put a front in it and then get, walk the machine around the back and then you can actually push the tree. The idea is directional falling the tree and putting the tree out on a track where we can actually get it from, rather than fall it somewhere where it was actually leaning. Walk down to my machine, start the old girl up. Okay. Put it back over that way. 
the untrained eye, a working coop looks all over the place, but there's a system to follow. And it's vital the contractors get it right, otherwise they can lose money or even their contracts. We've got the skidder coming into the landing, uh, then the uh, processor operator, he'll look at his tree, he'll decide whether it's a, a pulp log by being trained to, to know what pulp, uh, merch wood and what a saw log is, so he'll have that put in his separated uh, areas and then an excavator or skidder will come along and put those in their segregated areas. decent one here in a minute. It tells you the length on the screen, your, your length, and it tells you the saws down, or sort of the hardwood length, the diameter at the, the front grabs and the diameter at the back grabs where we're about to cut it. So if he was a bit better, we'd probably get a peeler out of it, but he's only a, a waddle, so he's a little bit small. This one here's a bit flared. We'll cut him off, just another regrow. So there you can see the skidder and he's just dragged some uh, logs in that have just been harvested here to the landing, which is kind of the hub of the harvesting operation. <clears throat> that excavator there has got a processing head on it, the operator in there makes the decision as to what grade of log it will actually be and where it will go to. So there's pretty much three types of logs that come off a coop like this. You've got the pulp logs which get chipped up and made into paper. You've got logs that are sent to the hue and wood centre through the veneer mill there. And then you've got these, the saw logs, and they're the cream of the crop. They're the most valuable. After the break, it's back to school as we learn just how to drive one of these big girls and all the planning that is part of harvesting a coop. <laughs> 